you know, I'm sure you heard that um, Quavo, he did a um, memorial to, to take off at the Grammys, but you know, they got video showing that him and Offset got into it backstage. Did you hear about that? I mean, first, you know, RIP to take off. And I'm glad I want to talk about this because I haven't been able to share my thoughts. It's it's an emotional, it's an emotional situation because I look at you got these young guys that come from around the Athens, Georgia area, came from nothing again. One of the biggest groups, probably since the Beatles, you know. Real talk. Okay. Um, a family of guys who all grew up together. And, you know, being down south myself, I, I do see how when you grow up in a small little country town, how, you know, you, you, you do have better morals. I mean, these guys, for, for the most part, from what I've understood and from how I kind of look, because I'm, I'm kind of a very... I'm kind of inquisitive where I could just see a person and how they act and how and where they came from. You could tell that they came from humble beginnings and being in a small town, they they had morals. You know, in small towns down south, you know, church, a lot of church down here, Prez, you know what I'm saying? And you could just see, like, these guys wasn't gangsters. These guys wasn't, you know, ignorant. They wasn't, you know, they these were some good guys who enjoyed their pop and rapped and came up with a style of their own and, and man, had some hits also. And still probably would have, as a three, I'm sure Quavo and, and Offset will have hits to come because they're very talented. But what's happened to them is just, I mean, it couldn't be more disappointed as far as, again, disappointed of our culture, man. You know what I'm saying? To, for, for these young guys to be so great, so talented, to help their family come up out of nothing and then, you know, uh, take off dead, Quavo and offset of beef. And like, this is what, and, and a major reason of this is because there's nobody older really guiding them. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the stuff that they, I'm sure, grew up with, I'm sure is different with, when it comes to this hip hop thing. You know, this, this hip hop business is a, Man, it's 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 you know it's a dangerous business right now. Yeah, yeah. When you know when money gets involved and you got all these guys around you that you know if you don't if you don't keep your circle close of 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 the guys who you grew up with or at least have some history with, and you just let a bunch of guys who you don't know and just because you're thinking that this is going to be a protection, well, that could be just as dangerous as the people who they're protecting you from, anyways. Because it's always going to be about money. It's always going to be about money. And, you know, I know Jay Prince. You know, Prince Jay, Jay signed me. Jay signed me uh, when, when in 96, 97. I met Jay Prince at, at Jack the Rapper. And at this time, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we was a group. The group was called Almighty RSO. And, you know, Back then, being in Boston, we was heavy Ghetto Boys fans, heavy Rap-A-Lot fans, because we was kind of like a, a street gangster rap group. But since we was, since we're two hours from New York, you know, everything is New York at that time. And we love New York hip hop, but we just was exposed to NWA, Ghetto Boys, because we're in Boston and we only could listen to college radio. So we, we're listening to more of a broader playlist. We're just not listening to the East Coast stuff. So I grew up like, once the, you know, even West Coast wise in the early years, Ice T, you know, back in the Grandmaster Flash day, Ice T was rapping on the movies Breaking, and that was early in the game. But he was from the West Coast, so it's, you know, I I just always had a my my listening was always everywhere. And at that point, we made a song that we got dropped off the label. Tom Silverman, we see him and and uh, we made a song called One of the Chamber, and was talking about police brutality. Tom Silverman, Tommy Boy had signed us to a single deal. He was getting ready to shoot the video, then he dropped us because he was under pressure from the police because the police were saying we was inciting violence because of one of the chamber. The song was about particularly two kids that lost their lives in Boston and the police had gotten, you know, they got over. You know, the stuff that's happening now with these police was happening way back then in Boston. It just was nobody ever said anything about it. Absolutely. But, 
But um, Tom dropped us and didn't call us or nothing. We found out through the newspaper and um, that the Boston police were suing us, a bunch of bullshit. Anyways, he dropped us. We seen him at Jack the Rapper. And we're deep as fuck at Jack the Rapper. We had the Marriott, remember? That they used to hold, the Jack the Rappers used to be at the Marriott. Of course. The Marriott, the Marriott Marquis, the one in Times Square. Yep, yep. And rappers from all over the country would come there. It was a huge conference. It was crazy. So we see Tom coming down the escalator. Tom sees us. His first reaction, this is no lie, was to start walking back up the escalator while it was coming down. I could tell he was nervous. Um, Tom comes down, man, we approach him. At the same time, Tom comes, here comes Lil J down the hallway with a bunch of niggas. So it's us, it's Lil J, everybody's deep. Tom's scared as hell, but he sees Jay walk over. Jay, this is Jay Prince. He was like, Ray, listen, this is Jay Prince. You know, that, listen, you know, I'm under pressure. I can't play this type of um, hip hop, you know, but he can. He's, you know, and at that point, it was like, oh shit, I'm getting ready to meet Lil Jay. So I almost forgot about Tom for a second. Tom weaseled his way up <laughs> out of You know what I'm saying? But I, I did, you know, me and Jay, man, you know, and, and Jay to me was, man, like he was the guy. Because the Ghetto Boys, Scarface, Rest in Peace, Bushwick, man, Willie D, those are all my friends. And, you know, I ended up moving to Texas for a year when he signed us. And we lived in Houston. And, you know, uh, shit, man, it was like, to me, it was like living a dream because we love gangster rap so much that we, at that point, other than N.W.A., Jay Princeton were, were the guys. You know, yeah. so I know Jay. And... One thing I can tell you about Jay, like Jay, Jay's not gonna, like you're not, you never heard nothing about Jay in other people's business back then. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay, Jay, Jay Prince kept it, you know, whatever his business was with rap a lot was his business, okay? And, you know, I remember, you know what I'm saying, meeting Jazz when Jazz was real young, you know, because Jay's, Jay stayed on, looked like he had his own township or something. I mean, Jay, you know what I'm saying, was really doing big things back then that a lot of black men wasn't doing. And I just never known for him, you know, other than if you fuck with him or his, I never known for him just to be running around bullying shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to, you know, the whole mob tie situation. I mean, you know, Young black men need guidance. And I don't think Jay gets the credit enough for what he's done in Houston. I think the whole checking in thing has, you know, and, and I'm looking at social media and, I, and, and you know, though I kind of feel bad for what he's going through with social media, but that's, that's what social media does. And I know that's not bothering Jay because Jay's not a social media guy. You may see him doing interviews now, but before you hardly, you, you would hardly see Jay. So, um, this situation's unfortunate. And it's it's hard for me to speak on these type of situations because it's still an ongoing investigation. I can only speak from the people that I know. And I've met Jay, we've always been one. He signed us, gave us a, a chance when nobody did. You know what I'm saying? I'll always be grateful for that. And, you know, with, with the situation, a life was lost. You know, a, a very influential, and you could just tell, Takeoff was the only one that was, when I had the crab trap open, he was the only one that would come to the crab trap. Humble as hell. He would buy yeah, food. very humble. He loved our food. And, and you know, my son, Ray Ray, uh, him and Ray, were, you know, it was cool. He came down just, man, I just, and then when I see pictures of him when he was little, you could just tell he was a, a really, really good guy, man. And, you know, I, 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 I never met him because every time he came twice to the crab trap, you know, so I, and, and I, I was never there, but, um, I was never there when he came, but, you know, I haven't met those guys, Quavo, and, you know, I'm just a fan of the music, you know what I'm saying, and how they carry themselves. I think the situation could have been, again, that's another situation with the only thing I want to say about it. If you move better, you live longer. You know, if I could give any of these young guys, if you move better, move with thought, you live longer. Moving with muscle, you, if you, I, I can move around this country by myself and never get into nothing just by the way I move. 
opposed to having paying five bodyguards to run around with me. And mm -hmm. what I found out is that a lot of times that so if you don't have the right security, that can fuck you up. That can really mess you up. If you don't have the right guys, a lot of sometimes security want to be the celebrities. So they'll scream and hoop and holler something that had that that could just, I'm not saying this situation, I'm just saying in general, sometimes your guys that who are your, who aren't security, security is, is somebody who has experience and protecting people, but also diffusing situations so nothing happens. It's not always about a reaction needs a reaction. And I think that there's too many incidences out here where an older guy with some, with, with some intelligence just isn't in the situation to defuse it. That didn't have to go down like that. Me, me, when I was on the road, we go from the show to the hotel, we gonna chill. Niggas got girls, I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? We ain't running around the city. We're not doing that. Then we gonna get up early and we gonna get on the bus and we gonna move to the next city. You know, it, 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 you know, and I understand because me, see now, man, I go through the hoods and everything. It's different for me now, but I can understand the Migos are on a whole different other level of fame. So, you know, you have to be careful when I get it. But it's like some things you just have to avoid. Gambling, dice game with niggas, that's dead. We're not doing that. We're not gambling. That's so in real. That's so We're real. We're not being, I wouldn't give a fuck who we with. We're not gambling with nobody in another city. We're not doing it. It don't make no sense to do, to, to be gambling. And I'm only telling you from, because I ran my shit. My guys, it was, it was a situation where there, there was direction. And the direction had to be the smartest plan, the blueprint that's gonna get us home alive. When we're going on these tours, we're going through these cities. And, and that has to be first. Shit, takeoff wasn't even a part of that whole scenario. And that's just a situation that you could tell that, look, shots are going all off all over the place. I'm sure, I'm sure the shot that hit takeoff wasn't, it couldn't have been met as far as him looking like he was going to be trying to uh, do something. It's just that in, in close quarters, shots are being fired from everywhere, from both sides. So if, 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 if you move better and you move intelligently, you, you, you're going to live longer and, you, and you're going to make it to your next destination. There's a lot of bullshit that you have to avoid that can be avoided if somebody's there, maybe a little older, a little more experienced to say, hey, bro, we ain't doing that. And of course, they have to be able to respect the older guy. You know, OG just isn't a name, man. It's just not a, a slang. It's supposed to be somebody who's respected that the younger guy is going to listen to because he has experience and, he's, and, and, and knowledge in this type of situation. That's what these young rappers are lacking right now. And that's why a lot of them are dying. That's why a lot of them are, 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 are overdosing, getting shot, beefing, because there's no type of structure of somebody who's, 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 who's leading men. That's where rank comes in. Remember you was talking about rank? Well, this is where rank comes in. Not rating rappers when you're with a group of guys and you're moving in, 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 a different, in, in different situations. You need somebody there that's going to point you in the right direction. And that's where only an older guy can do that. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.